Hey YouTube, in this video I'm going to be doing a deck profile of the my new Chocho uh, Bermuda Triangle deck. So this is based off of the new trial deck that came out that I unboxed in a previous video on this channel. Uh, it is basically the trial deck with some additional cards added from the booster set that came out with it, which is Prismatic Divas, which is exclusive to the Bermuda Triangle Clan. Um, so we're going to go right over it. Uh, this deck, for the most part, is very budget. All you need is two trial decks of this trial deck with that features Tirua, which is the main grade 3. Uh, and then a couple of other cards that, depending on where you are, they could be pricey to get for the, for the stride deck. But other than that, it's very easy to obtain almost all the cards that I'm going to feature here. There are some exceptions. There are going to be some stride units that are not in here. Um, because the price on these those cards are pretty expensive right now. They're overpriced, in my opinion, um, so I won't get them right now. I'll probably pick them up later when the prices have gone down or people have lost interest in the deck, unless this deck really takes off and becomes super competitive on the levels of being able to beat out a Blaster, Luar, those type of decks. So let's get right into it. So the main grade three of the deck is Chuchu or Chocho? I say Chocho. I think the Japanese pronunciation is actually Chuchu, um, but Chuchu debut stage Tirua. So I did pull the SP one in one of my two boxes. That was actually the one that I did open up on camera. So I'm actually pretty lucky to get that card, this card. But yeah, so these are the four that I've got. Uh, so basically, she is kind of like Leward from the Shadow Paladin trial deck that came out back in December, in the sense that she has the potential to stride for free if the conditions are met. She has a GB1 skill that during your stride, if the number of regards you have is one or less, you may stride without paying the cost. It's actually during your ride phase, um, this condition has to be met. So, And the deck is designed to uh, get into situations where that scenario happens. Um, she does have an on-stride skill as well. So I find it interesting how they're trying to... I, I don't know, like... What I noticed is that none of the cards in this trial deck have the harmony skill, which is the keyword. Harmony is the keyword for the clan. And it seems like either Bushy Road is moving the game away from keywords because it complicates the game, or, uh, and they're returning back to the way it was before, uh, or they're just not doing it for some reason for a while. Like, they just got rid of the keyword. They just don't feel like using keywords. But anyway, for Tirua, she is your main grade three you want this to be the vanguard so for her uh, backup grade threes i am running three chocho uh, muritz muritz or muritz so i like her because she doesn't have to hit so she can swing as a rear guard oftentimes what will happen is she'll swing as a rear guard uh, and activate the skill of choosing another chocho and put on the bottom of the deck then you can choose a grade two or lower from your hand that's chocho and call it and it gets 4k power so it's pretty good at getting extending your attacks of that turn. Um, so I like this at three. You could run four if you want. This is from the Prismatic Divas booster set. So it's relatively easy to get. It's just a rare. Uh, and then the fourth grade three that I'm running is one Chocho Pier Pierin. 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 So she's from the trial deck. Uh, just one copy of her. Uh, when she hits a Vanguard. As Vanguard or Regard, you can send something to the bottom of the deck. So basically, you tuck your uh, Chocho Regards on the bottom of the deck to draw a card or to get ex extra attacks. That's basically how this this playstyle works compared to the regular Bermudas. Whereas regular Bermuda traditionally is about bouncing cards back to your hand to use as shield, so you leave the field open. You can kind of dodge Link Joker and other clans like that and Kagero and stuff. Um, and maintain hand advantage. These guys are more like Gear Chronicle, where they kind of, it's kind of like looking at it like Time Leap, sort of, uh, where they clear up the field and draw cards into the hand, uh, but they, they prevent deck out and they just kind of recycle themselves. So it's kind of interesting. I feel like it's a little, it reminds me a little bit of Madolce and Yu Gi Oh! I'm not really sure how to explain it any better than that, but that's the Grade 3 lineup. Grade 2s for Chocho Ayana. So she's from the trial deck. She's a four of must do to build the best deck possible for this sub clan. 
Um, she's just like a very key card. So basically what she does is when whenever your other rear guard with Chocho is put back into the deck, you can counter blast one and then put her on the bottom of the deck uh, to then draw a card, choose a card with Chocho from the hand call, and it gets 3k power. So again, it extends your attacks just like this grade 3 does. Um, but it's grade 2, so it's an interceptor. It has all the benefits of being a grade 2. So yeah, it's just really good. Next, I am running three Chocho Blanche or Blanche. So she is a double R from Prismatic Divas. Um, you can actually get away without running this card at all. Like you can build the deck to run very, fairly well without even using this card. Um, but she is pretty good in here. I feel she has an on call effect. So when she's placed on R, uh, you can Soul Blast one and then send another Chocho other than her to the bottom of the deck. Then you look at the top four cards of the deck, reveal one, put in your hand, shovel the deck, and then you can uh, put a card in your hand. Yeah, and then this unit gets 2k power. So she, I don't know, like in playtesting the deck, I definitely feel like Ayana is more useful in most scenarios. But sometimes this is useful, um, but it seems more situational. So if you don't have this card, it's not the end of the world. You can still build the deck. So that's why it's not like it's essential, but it is still a pretty good support card. Um, okay, so for another grade two from the trial deck, I'm running two Chocho Listilla. Listia? Listia is actually a card that I think is better than I originally thought. Um, so I, I'm only running two of her still, but you could bump this up to three and drop this to two, or if you don't have this, run four of this. Um, but this is surprisingly good because this is basically your attack gainer. So when it attacks a vanguard, well, it's not only attack gainer. It's basically your 11k attacker, is what I meant. So when it attacks, you can soul blast one, choose another chocho, put on the bottom, draw a card, and this gets 2k power. So this is basically your last attacker. That's the way I think of it, depending on whether you have this or not. So. Uh, yeah, that's why I feel like you could run more of this and it would be pretty good. And the last grade two I'm running is two of Chocho Suguri. Suguri is again, it's it's not it's from the the booster set. Uh, it's a rare. Um, I feel like it it's somewhat situational, but sometimes it is pretty decent. Um, but in terms of like, I'm still trying to figure out what's the best lineup for these guys for this deck. But if I had to say it right now, I feel like the, the, these two from the Trial Deck are actually more useful most of the time than the cards, than these two that came out in the, the booster set. So, um, like I said, you can build a pretty decent budget Chocho deck without putting these two cards in there. But I feel like this just gives you more options in terms of the playstyle. So, basically, the nice thing about this is when it hits a Vanguard, and this is not a GB1 restricted effect, and that's why I like it somewhat. When it hits a Vanguard, you can draw a card, send something to the bottom, count us one, send something to the bottom, and then draw a card. Uh, that's just the regular regard effect. Now, the GB1 effect is once per turn, uh, when something goes to the bottom of the deck, you can choose another one of your units and give it 4k power. So she she's good at two, I feel, because sometimes she's just there to kind of randomly, like, power up stuff. She can't power, she can't, the problem with her is she can't do that skill of powering stuff up more than once per turn, which I feel really kind of hurts her viability in terms of competitive, the competitive scene. So that's why, that's why she's a little bit situational. So those are grade twos. For grade ones, I am running four of the Chocho -Cho Sentinel from Prismatic Divas. Definitely recommending recommend running this uh, if you want to make the Chochos uh, as as good as you can. You can run the Unflip Perfect Guard if you have them. Um, if not, then you can just run the trial deck one. I like this card because I have pulled off some ridiculous shenanigans with this, where in one match, I remember I got like two of these in the damage zone, and then healed one, eventually got a second one by guarding from hand into the drop zone. Then I was able to bounce one back in the deck, bounce this to the hand, then heal off the other one that was in there, and then do the same thing again. So there's some hilarious, it's rare, but it can have in combos with this type of Sentinel. So I like the Sentinel a lot, so I definitely recommend running it. And surprisingly, it's not that expensive compared to 
um, Esra in Shadow Paladin in the Lured stuff in the Ritual build. So this is actually pretty nice. Next, for Chocho Klenis. She's basically your searcher for Tirua. Um, but the only annoying thing about her is that you have to discard. If you add a Tirua to your hand, so if you add one of these, then you have to discard cards uh, with some of their grades being three or greater. So, like, if you have another grade three, you can throw the grade three. Um, but then it's like, what was the point of adding uh, the Tiro to your hand? Um, and then you have to throw away other stuff. Otherwise, you would just kind of, like, throw away one of these. Or you could throw away a two and a one. I don't really know why people would do that, but some people do do that. I don't really know why, though. This is basically there to help you make sure you get Tirua as the Vanguard because you really do want this as the Vanguard. If you don't have this as the Vanguard, the deck won't really do a whole lot. So that's why there's four of this. And then it does have the ability to unflip uh, when it's on the rearguard at the end of the turn. You can Soul Blast one and return it to the bottom of the deck to unflip one. And that's if you have a Tirua Vanguard. So it's pretty much a utility card, so I run four of it. Next, three, Chocho Prairie. So she is, she's a very interesting card. You basically, what happens with her is GB1, if you superior call her during the battle phase, uh, you can Soul Blast one. It doesn't have to be during the battle phase, but I basically consider it battle phase because if you're doing this during the main phase, there's no reason to do this skill uh, because you're just wasting a Soul Blast. So she basically, when she comes to the field, you can Soul Blast one, and then you can call another rear guard from the hand, or you call another Chocho from the hand to the rear guard circle in the same column as his unit. So it helps you extend your combos, get a, uh, another 16k attack, essentially, or something. So, so basically why that's in your three. Then two, Chocho Marl, because she's your Vanguard booster. She only does her effect if she's boosting the Vanguard, so you don't need more than two of her. In fact, you could run just one of her. Uh, and then I am running one... Chocho Rasaka because you sometimes you'll be running cards like Olivia and other stuff that you'll bounce up and you'll be able to recall her back down so she could potentially call her down power something up so you could either make her function as a 9k in the column that she's in not I mean you're not giving the power to her but you, you get what I'm saying she's giving 3k to a column whether she's in it or not uh, but it has to be a Chocho unit so She's restricted to Chocho. I don't know. I'm just using. She's a product card. I'm running one of her, just to as a tech choice, just to see if there's any interesting combos. So far, I haven't really found anything outstanding. So I may take it out, um, and may run like a Stride fodder or something. Um, but yeah, I'm just running that right now. It's Chocho, and then for the trigger lineup, four of the Chocho draw, four of this Chocho effect critical. So this is Chocho Sarah. So four of her is pretty decent in here, I'd say. Then four more Chocho Critical. Um, there's actually another common critical from Prismatic Diva, so that you can run 12. You can already go with 12 Chocho Criticals if you wanted. Um, but I'm just doing four draw, eight critical for now, uh, and four heal. So all Chocho. And the reason why I'm doing this lineup is because what I found is you tend to send your stuff to the bottom of the deck. Sometimes you draw off of it and replenish, other times you don't. Um, so that's why I feel like the draw trigger is pretty decent. It also has the Margul effect going for it. So it's, and there are quite a few cards in here that Soul Blast. So that's why I feel like this is pretty good in addition to the Critical, the Sarah, which also goes in the Soul. So they don't have the triggers that replenish, but they do actually know yeah, she does go in the soul. So, yeah, so you do need stuff that goes in the soul. Uh, and then the starter that I'm running is the trial deck starter. So this does not go in the soul, So which is why another reason why I'm running those things that go in the soul. Um, basically, when something goes to the bottom of the deck, you can counterblast one and send this to your hand and then draw a card. So, pretty good. So, for the stride deck, it's... It's a pretty budget right now, depending on Olivia. But I am running two of the trial deck on hit Chocho unit because it's relatively easy to, to use. It's on hit, so people are probably going to say it's trash. 
but it's still all I have right now. One Somni, another on hit. Uh, one Alprina, so she allows you to decide if you want to bounce two stuff during the main phase. One Amoris, because if you need to bounce stuff uh, and you don't want to pay the Soul Blast, you can just do it on the turn you stride on the stride phase. Then four Olivia, so this is probably like the most expensive or hard to obtain card, but I'm running four of it. If you have the rares, run them, they're good. So, for Olivia, because I don't have the Chocho Triple R. Um, and then for the G Guardians, two of the Chocho Engage Lead Platy. Two of the Highest Society Kitron. One Chocho Palfi. You could run another one of her. There were two of them in the trial deck. So she's a common G Guardian, that's pretty cool. And then one of Leona and one Nasha. So I'm running a lot of G Guardians because I don't have a lot of other units, aggressive units to run with the deck. So typically you will stride Olivia twice. So that's why we run four of her. And you usually will open up with uh, this as the first stride. So it just depends. But sometimes Somni, but most of the time it's like this, and then Olivia, then Olivia, and then maybe another one of these in the late game. So it's not the end of the world that we don't have the Chocho -cho stride, but if you have access to it, go ahead and run it. Uh, but that's basically what I'm running for right now. Let me know what you guys think about the Chocho -cho Tirua. Do you think this card will see a lot of play? Or do you think it's just kind of be one of those random Bermuda decks that... Uh, it shows up, then it disappears, and you never really hear about it again. So, looking forward to your comments on how it stacks up the prisms and the other couple of Bermuda Triangles or competitive Bermuda Triangles. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.